VAT or Value Added Tax is a system of indirect taxation. In this quick VAT tutorial, I will walk you through the concept and definition of how VAT works, run you through a VAT example with a Value Added Tax calculation, and discuss the different VAT categories in use. VAT is used in around 140 countries in the world. These are the basics of a VAT system. VAT is a system of indirectization on the sale of goods and services to final consumers. In other words, VAT is a tax on consumption. VAT is collected in stages through what is called the chain of supply, as you see in the picture on the right. I will illustrate this chain of supply concept with numbers in the next part of the video. VAT registered businesses charge VAT on their sales, this is called output tax, and recover VAT on their purchases and expenses. This is called input tax, and settle the difference with country tax authorities. VAT is not a cost to businesses themselves, they collect and pay it on behalf of the government. VAT rules and rates and rules are subject to change, so check with your local country tax authorities or tax advisor for any country specific application of the general idea and any exceptions to the rule. Let's visualize the concept of VAT with a VAT example that includes numbers. We start on the left with the producer. Let's say this is a company where the owner walks on the beach to collect a bag of seashells and brings them by foot to a jewelry manufacturer. She sends an invoice for the goods of 100 euro and charges VAT of 20, making the invoice total 120 euro. The manufacturer of the jewelry converts the seashells to beautiful jewelry and sells them for 200 euro to a distributor. On top of the 200 euro for the goods, she charges 40 euro in VAT and the invoice total is 240 euro. The distributor supplies these jewels to stores in many locations and sells the jewels for 300 euro with 60 euro VAT. The retailer then sells these jewels to consumers at 400 euro with 80 euro VAT. Value gets added along the way in the chain of supply. Each company provides specific expertise and skills. Each company sells at a higher price than what they purchase the goods for. Here is how the collection in stages by the government works. The producer on the left has charged to the manufacturer 20 euro output VAT and has no input VAT, so settles 20 euro through a payment to the government. The manufacturer has charged 40 euro output VAT to the distributor and has 20 euro input VAT, so pays a net amount of 20 euro to the government. The distributor has 60 euro output VAT and 40 input VAT, so another net 20 to the government. The retailer has 80 euro output VAT and 60 input VAT for the last net 20 euro VAT going to the government. Four steps of 20 euros VAT each equals a total of 80 euros. As you can see, VAT is really a tax that impacts consumers, as they are the ones ultimately paying the 80 euro that is embedded in the retail price of 480 euro. VAT is not a cost to businesses themselves, they collect and pay it on behalf of the government, over the various stages of the chain of supply. Let's go through the VAT categories and rates for the UK as an example. The standard rate for most goods and services is 20%. The reduced rate for things like children's car seats and home energy is 5%. Some items, such as most foods and children's clothes, are taxable, but at a rate of 0%. There is a category of services, more specifically medical, financial and postal services, that is exempt from VAT. There are also transactions that are out of scope, donations to charity and tolls for a public road. The first three categories, standard rate, reduced rate and zero rate, are considered taxable goods and services. Even though at first glance the zero rate category and the exempt category look the same, there is a big difference on the input tax side. The seller of exempt goods or services, like a bank, is not entitled to reclaim VAT on business purchases, whereas the seller of goods and services rated at 0%, is entitled to reclaim VAT on business purchases. The European Union is very well known for having a well-functioning VAT system. 
Please be aware that although many VAT related legislation is largely standardized across the EU member states, the standard rates differ widely. And what goes into the standard, first the reduced rate category, can also differ from country to country. In this globalizing world with lots of cross-border transactions, how does VAT work in an international context? How about the Dutch training company of your finance storyteller that delivers training services in other EU countries? How should he apply VAT? The main rule is that the place of supply of business to business services provided between two VAT entrepreneurs within the EU will be the country where the recipient of the services is established. So does that mean that this training services company has to register for VAT in all EU countries where it supplies its services? For most companies, fortunately not. There is a solution for this situation and it is called reverse charge VAT. In reverse charge VAT, there is no VAT on the invoice itself. The recipient of the invoice self-assesses local country VAT in their monthly or quarterly VAT filing and deducts that same amount in that VAT filing, effectively leading to a VAT charge of zero, but with two line items. Both supplier and customer file a separate form of cross-border transactions, detailing counterpart VAT number and amount. That's how reverse charge VAT works. It greatly simplifies my administrative life. Here's what your accounts payable staff should look out for when receiving reverse charge VAT invoices. The VAT amount on the invoice should be zero. The VAT number of the supplier and the VAT number of the correct invoiced legal entity are mentioned. The supplier has mentioned reverse charge in English, Umkehrung der Steuerschuldnerschaft in German, Autoliquidation in French or BTW Verlegd in Dutch on the invoice. On the Finance Storyteller YouTube channel, you can find lots of well-researched videos explaining business, finance and accounting topics. Please subscribe to the Finance Storyteller channel and take the time to like the video and comment below. On average, I post one new video per week. If you subscribe to the channel, you will be the first to see it.